Thank you, Father, for the worship. Thank you for your presence in this service. Thank you for who you are, the way maker, <laughs> miracle worker, ever watching over us. We thank you for the word of God this morning. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here to illuminate and bring revelation of that word to our hearts individually and what it would mean to us and how it would apply to our lives. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, in uh, October again of this year, just like last year it was October where God told me it was going to be seen as God sees. I don't know why October this year, same thing. He just dropped it in me. I really wasn't even spending time praying per se, uh, seeking him about, Lord, where do you want to go? I was just going along, just having just normal time in prayer, and all of a sudden it just dropped in me. 2021 is going to be a year of new beginnings. So I just began to meditate on that. Lord, what does that mean? A year of new beginnings. And it'd be easy to just fall towards, well, you know, 2020 was a challenging year with the whole COVID-19, the, the election and all of that. But he said, don't, don't set your focus on those natural things. Yes, he can do some things through that. But, but that's not what it's about. New beginnings meaning something spiritual, a path that he wants to take us down that we've not been before. Now, you've got to be open to a new beginning. Like I said, you can't be set in old mindsets. You've got to be open to, Lord, I'm ready to start something new. Which, to start something new means you may have to abandon some things that are old. Some old mindsets, some old behaviors, the way you've always done it. I would challenge you in this, if, if the way you've always done it, if you're not getting results, and this is nothing that you've not heard from me before, but if the way you've always done it isn't getting any results or you're getting very limited results, open your heart up to say, Lord, I want a new beginning in this arena, the arena of faith, the arena of, of speaking the word and de declaring the word over your life. I'm not saying forget completely about everything that God's done, but what I'm saying is if you've not seen results in certain areas or you've seen very limited results, God's saying, I want to start something new in this area of your life. God's about, we, we serve a God of results, amen? He wants results, and he wants to do a new thing. Our key text that we're going to be jumping off of, and I have several others, but our key text is on Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Will I'll be reading out of the New King James Version today, so you know what version to bring up. But in Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, and God pretty much is saying just what I said. Do not remember the former things. Verse 18 of Isaiah 43. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, everyone say behold. behold. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I kind of alluded that to that as I was talking about being a way maker. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. He says it here, I'll make a road in the wilderness. You say, well, I don't want to be in the wilderness. Well, who cares where you're at if he's making the road? <laughs> I don't like the wilderness. What does it matter if he's making the road? Because a road gets you through something. And it's a lot easier taking the road than it is to stepping off of the road and trying to make your own way. I believe that the Spirit of God spoke that through Pastor Dina. Some of us, we don't want, we, we don't like the way it seems that God is making. Well, you know what? You can take the way that God makes, which is a road, and usually a road means that it's cleared. It's a pretty well-traveled path. The rocks have been removed. The stumps have been removed. The difficulties have been removed. 
Come on, I used to build roads when I lived in Texas. It's a lot easier going down a paved road. Hey, man. I went in and I cleared some areas out to build roads. It's just like in the beginning, man, unless you had a piece of large equipment, you weren't, you weren't going through it. So you can either be on the road that he makes. And like I said, who cares what it, where, where, it's being, where it's going, if it's going through the wilderness or here it says he'll make rivers in the desert. What, what's the difference where you are if he's in the middle of it? Or you can jump right into it and say, well, I'm just going to walk through the wilderness on my own because I really don't like the path that he's making. I think it'd be better if I went this way. Well, then you can trip over the stumps, on. step on the thorns, step on a few rocks, twist an ankle on the way. Come on. Go over some hills and mountains that you shouldn't be going over because he said, I don't go that way. But you know what? You can even be on flat land, make your own way, and go over a mountain with a road, and the road is a whole lot easier. See, I'm painting a picture here. It's just like, it doesn't make any difference what you're going through, is get on the road of new beginnings. He'll make a new way. He'll make a new way, amen? Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in John, or I'm sorry, in Luke, and uh in Mark and in Matthew, you'll find similar, the similar story. But I chose to pick out Luke. But in Luke chapter 5, verses 33 through 39, you can turn over there. if You've got your Bibles. But Luke chapter 5, verse 33 through 39, is then, Then they said to him, this is the disciples talking to Jesus, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise, those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. And he said to them, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. Then he spoke a parable to them. No one, verse 36, no one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one, otherwise the new makes a tear. And also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. Verse 37, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins and both are preserved. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new for he says the old is better. Notice he says there in verse 37, no one puts new wine into old wineskins. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. Why did he say that? It's a parable. Why did he say that? Because new wine is still in the fermentation stage. And because it's still in the fermentation stage, it's expanding. And if you put it into an old wineskin that's already set in its ways, see, we got to watch out. If you want new beginnings for 2021, you can't be set in your ways. And I'm talking about even what you think you know about the word. You've got to be open enough to locate and identify where you're at. Because if you're set in your ways and you try to add, so you, take, you take 2021 and you begin to try and add something new to it, what will happen, and we just talked about this the other day, about, and, we can, and it can happen to us as believers that have been in the Word for years. We can get offended with the Word. Yeah. Well, well, Lord, I don't want to do it that way. And we don't want to change our mindsets. We don't want to change our behaviors. And we try to put new wine into it, which is revelation from the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> I says we try to put new wine in it, which is revelation from the Holy Ghost an eye opening to the word of God like we've not seen it before. Amen. And one of two things <clears throat> will happen. We'll either burst or we'll disregard it because you know when things start to stretch, when there's pressure put on, what are we usually going to do? We're going to retreat and say, I don't like the pressure. 
Yeah. When it feels like you're going to break. Come on. When you're pressing in to the things of God, when you're tr pressing in to something new. See, and this isn't, I want to, I, I, I feel I need to, the need to reiterate this. 2021 is the year of new beginnings. This isn't a good idea that Pastor Steve had. If you take the message today and over the next several weeks and go, well, that's good, Pastor Steve, but God didn't tell me that. Well, then you're not listening to the direction of your pastor. There you go. I'm just going to say it like it is. And if you're sitting there right now and even got that thought, well, you're trying to tell me that I don't hear from God, I hear from God too. But God puts you under a pastor because he brings things from heaven for you. Yes. This isn't Pastor Steve giving you a good message. It's just like, well, that's wonderful, but you know what? I'm going to do this. Well, then you go right ahead and do that. Yeah, it's, uh, that's good. She just said it's not advice. Who said that? You said that? Somebody said that? We said it. See, I just, and I, I say these things is because because a large part of the new things in my life that have happened over 30 years, and there are things new that happen every year. But a part of that is, is because I've, and this is hard sometimes for a pastor to get up and say these things, but it's because I saw my pastor as a voice from heaven. And I still see him and her, Pastor Duane and Mary Hansen, as a voice from heaven. And because I esteem and honor that voice from heaven, God honors me and has taken me to new things continuously. I'm not saying you in here are darn doing that, but if you are or you have never esteemed a pastor in your life to that level, um, I would encourage you. You don't have to do it, but I would encourage you. It would benefit you greatly. Uh, it has benefited me greatly. It has benefited my wife greatly. It has been benefited people that I know uh, that have done the same. Uh, it has not benefited people that kind of have an attitude or a disregard, disrespect for the leaders in the body of Christ. I'm not saying, like I said, sometimes it's hard for a pastor to get up and say these things because it would almost, some people would almost say, well, you're just up there tooting your own horn. You just want people to, yeah, under your, no, that ain't it at all because you can do what you want. It don't make no difference to me. I'm just going to be honest with you. Remember, I'm the pastor that doesn't care. <laughs> it really doesn't make any difference to me if you do what I say or don't say because I'm not saying it. <laughs> and if you choose not to, okay. If things don't turn out well, don't blame me. <laughs> I've, there's been times where I've not esteemed the counsel of my pastor. I'm not saying I've done it all the time. There's been times when we were just back in Minnesota, was with my, our pastors. We spent 10 days with them, pretty much uh, 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 the majority of the time was with them. I mean, we were, visited family and spent time and everything, but, but we'd go back to their house. And, and I actually, I preached in our home church back there. And uh, before I preached, the Lord actually spoke to me and said, uh, I'll bet you they think you went rogue for a while. You know what I mean when I say that? Kind of was AWOL. Because in 2002, when we left the church back there, we knew God was moving us on, but how we left wasn't proper. And it was because I didn't esteem and honor the gift that was in them And uh, for a couple of years, I mean, it was okay for us. We went to Texas, and, and God worked through our lives and everything. I'm not saying that God just takes his hand off you, but uh, it could have went better. <laughs> it could have went better. Amen. So while we were just back there, I got up to preach on that, that Sunday morning, and I don't know, the Lord just had talked to me prior to the service, and while we were there, I just looked at, I'm, I'm standing right there, and I'm looking at my pastors in the front row, and I just, uh, I looked at him and I said, there was probably a time where you thought we went AWOL, didn't you? And uh, you don't know my pastor, but he got this look. And I knew what that look was. It was just like, oh, you only could, you really don't know how much we thought you went AWOL. 
Amen. But the thing is, and when I, I, I want to reiterate something, I said I'm the pastor that doesn't care. I mean, it really doesn't. I don't let it, the care come on me if someone does that, but I do have the care, meaning that I'll continue to pray for anybody. And I know that the love that our pastors had for us and their trust in Christ in us, because that's who they had to trust in, because by all outward appearances, they weren't going to put their trust in us. We didn't give them any reason to put their trust in us at that particular time. But they trusted Christ in us. They trusted the word that was put in us. They trusted the Holy Ghost in us. They prayed for us. And now we came out on the other side of it, and our relationship with them is even stronger than it was when we were serving for them. Amen. That was a whole lot for some. I have no idea why I said that, but it must have been for somebody. Amen. But God wants new, to put new wine in a new wine skin. So we have to be open to something new. You say, well, I've been born again. I was made new. I, I get all that. But even the Bible says in Lamentations 3 that his mercies are new every morning. So even though he's done a new thing, he's still doing new things. I said he's still doing new things. He's still making ways through the wilderness. He's still creating rivers through deserts. Come on, because our life, a new thing means that we're alive. His word is alive. And if it's alive, it's growing, it's developing, it's moving. It's going forward. It's not sitting in the same place. It's not becoming stale and stagnant. See, we can do that sometimes. All of us can be guilty of that sometimes in our lives where we've heard things, we've operated in things, we've seen God move, and, and we want to build a tabernacle. Come on. Just like Peter did when, when they went on the Mount of Figuration. Peter right away is like, Lord, this is good. I want to build a tabernacle. And the Lord is like, no, no, no. There's more to be done. There's new things. There's uh, Star Trek. There's boldly go where no man has gone before. There's new frontiers. <laughs> Come on, there's new things. The world is progressing in a negative way. We've got to, in a sense, progress. I know the word says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he is. How he works in the earth is the same. But we've got to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Meaning we've got to be aware of the things that are going on. We can't just go about it the old way all the time. We've got to be moving with God. See, God is always in a progression. That's why Jesus said, follow me. Well, you don't have to follow someone if they're not going nowhere. Come on. And if Jesus said, follow me, that means he's moving. And where he's moving is different than where he's been. It's a new beginning. It's a new way. You know, we all know the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We're new creatures in Christ. Behold, old things are passed away. Everything has become new. Everything has become new. Well, if everything has become new, have you experienced everything? If you've not experienced everything, that means there's still new things coming. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And old things are passed away. When, when someone leaves this earth, what do we say? They've passed away. Old things are dead. They've passed away. Old mindsets, old behaviors have died. Sometimes even the things we think we know about the word need to die because we've seen them the wrong way. All of us have done that. My gosh, I... See, I'm, I'm, the Lord's been dealing with me more and more is to just continue to reevaluate what you think you know, what you think you know, what you think you know, the revelations that you think you've got. 
and continually reevaluating and reevaluating and relooking at and relooking at and realizing, wow, I'm not getting results over here like the word says should I get, like I should get. So it's just like, well, then abandon it. Go a different direction. Go a new way. But sometimes we can get so caught up in our own mindsets and our own ways of doing things, and, and maybe it's because we've heard it from somebody that we love. You know, one of the teachers in the body of Christ is like, well, so-and-so said it, so if they said it, I'm just going that way. Well, who said they had it right? you got to remember the teachers. Now, I'm not saying we get prideful and think we just know better in every situation. That's like a child that thinks they know better than their parents. I'm saying you still honor and esteem the gifts that are in the body of Christ. But understand this, that even the gifts that are in the body of Christ that we put our trust in can get it wrong. Or there's revelation that we can get that can build on top of what they've gotten. We've got to be willing to be open to the fact is God can speak to us and build on top of the things that we've got. Or God can speak to us and say, you've got this all wrong. You've been believing wrong for a long time. And are we okay to say, I've been believing wrong? Or are we going to let pride get in the way and go, well, this is just the way it is? Well, I would ask you, are you getting results? Well, not really. Well, then why are you still doing it that way? Or, as I said earlier, are you getting limited results? Well, yeah, I'm getting some results. Do you think you could get more results? Yeah. Well, then, what do you need to add to it? Or what do you need to remove from it? Because, see, we can turn the Word of God into doctrine. Just doctrine. See, doctrine doesn't do anything. It's the living Word of God that does something. Doctrine is just a mindset. Doctrine is just head knowledge. Doctrine is just something that you can regurgitate and repeat to somebody, but it isn't even working in your life. We in the body of Christ need to go beyond that. See, when the Bible says that the word of God is alive, it means that it's working in your life. If it's just a book, it's not alive. If it's just black ink printed on the page, it's not alive. But when the black ink on this page comes off and into your heart and it actually begins to make a difference that's when it says that the word of God is alive means it's alive in you but it's not alive until it's working in your life until it's working in your life it's just a book just like any other book come on new beginnings it's a year of new beginnings amen The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, Be not drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. But be filled with the Spirit. See, a new beginning means we're still adding. One translation of that says to be being filled. Means it's a continuation. It's new. You're continuing to progress with the things of God. We in the body of Christ many times, especially in the Word of Faith camp, and I would, it's, uh, (laughs) how would I say it? Is we get stuck in a rut. We get stuck in a rut. I'm just as guilty. I get stuck in, I mean, that's the one thing that God's been working with me on as of recent and I say recent, it's probably been two or three years now, but that's the one thing that he's been working me on, is don't get caught in a rut. That's how denominations get built, because they get caught in a rut. And it's like, yeah, traditions. It's just like, well, this is the way it is, (laughs) and this is the way we're always going to do it. No, God is saying it's a new thing. See, in 2021, there's going to be some new things happening. There's even going to be some new things happening in the church. In this church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that means new things, not just, uh, well, I'm not going to say it that way because that would be wrong. I trust that everything that we do, even though it has a natural 
appearance has a spiritual impact. Amen. So there's going to be an even new things. You're going to see new things happening in the church. Amen. You're going to see new things happening in your pastor. Amen. Some of you are probably thinking, praise the Lord. <laughs> so right, I'm, I'm okay with that. The Lord's really been talking to me. is just continually locate yourself. Locate yourself. Locate yourself. I've created you to be something great. And yes, I know the word says we are. See, I, I, what I'm saying, a lot of the things I'm saying is, is to help us. It's not about just quoting the word over ourselves. We should speak the word over ourselves. We should declare the word over ourselves. But when I say locate yourself, I'm not saying just respond to me with a scripture. But when he really realizes, it's just like, but I don't look anything like that. Or I'm not, I'm not that, that, that scripture's not having any corresponding action in my life. It's still just, I'm quoting the scripture, you know? Like the one five, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Well, I'm a new creature in Christ. Well, are you? Well, yeah, the Bible says it is. You're absolutely right. The Bible says it is. Do you look new? Do you act new? Do you do new things? Do you get new outcomes? It's more than just quoting the scripture. I'm not saying stop quoting the scripture, but I'm saying if you can identify yourself See, to have a new beginning, you've got to be able to identify where you're at. You've heard me use the, the analogy before of, the, of a GPS or MapQuest or any of them. What do they ask for before you start your trip? Where are you? Locate yourself. If you're not willing to locate yourself or be honest about your location and you want to just fudge it a little bit, it's going to give you directions that are going to be not what you need. You have to be honest. This is the address I'm at. This is where I'm starting from. You know, I've, I've sometimes, just to get an idea, and this is more to just find out the mileage to some place, but you go to MapQuest, and you can put in a starting location, California, and you can put in your destination. Oklahoma, and it'll tell you that it's like 1,421 miles or something like that. But if you don't put in your actual starting location, you can, it's like, well, I could leave from this part in California, I could leave from here in California, I could leave from here in California. It's like, well, what good's that gonna do you? You're leaving from your house. And if you're leaving from your house, you need some specifics. I'm leaving from 1185 Sunbright Drive. And we need to be that specific with God. We need to be that specific with God. Because, man, when, you, when you're going somewhere and you put in the specifics, if you, and I know you've probably all done it before, but it'll actually tell you when you pull out of your driveway, it'll be like, go to the end of the block, turn left on such and such a street. Go three blocks and turn right on such and such a street. I mean, how many would like and like precise directions? Oh, man. Come on. And then there's one out there right now, and I still haven't used it, but my wife will use it, and some of you may have used it. It's called Waze. See, Jesus is the way. Waze is even be is better than MapQuest or a GPS is because you can put your starting location in to MapQuest and your ending location, and it'll tell you how to go there. But what it won't tell you is that 50 miles down the road, there's a road closure and a detour. But if you click in Waze, Waze will tell you that right away. Or as you're traveling, it's just like, you're going to be coming up to a whatever. You're going to want to get up. It'll even tell you when there's an accident. There's an accident up ahead so many miles. How many know how frustrating is it when you're traveling along and you run into, all of a sudden you have to come to a screeching halt? 
Do you know when you use ways? When you use the way? They'll tell you in advance so you can exit and get off before you come to that screeching halt and now you have nowhere to go but to sit. How many have ever been sitting there thinking, about, man, if I'd have just known, I would have gotten off at the last exit. Well, you know, if you follow the way, you'd have gotten off at the last exit. He'd have, cre he'd have created a new way. He would have told you, recalculating, recalculating. Come on. It's a year of new beginnings. God wants to do something new. And the new things that he wants to do will cause you to look and respond more like him. Yes, I know the word already says you are, are that. But I'm not talking about just speaking over yourself what the word says. I'm talking about the new beginning is where you actually see it in yourself. It functioning. You're walking in it. Let's take the things that we think we know and actually bring them to a place where it truly is a new beginning. I know the word says that we are new. I know the word says that we are righteous. I know the word says that we are more than conquerors. But does our life look like everybody else's life? Are we going through the motions every day? Are we dealing with the same family issues that everybody else deals with? Are we still dealing with the same financial issues that everybody else deals with? Are we still turning to the banks and the credit cards when we want to buy something we don't have the resources? Are we still turning to the medicine cabinet for our Dayquil and our NyQuil and our Elka-Seltzer Plus and our uh, antacid medications and our, our Tylenols and our Advils? And I'm not, I'm not saying if there's something wrong with you if you do that, but that's what the world does. We're supposed to be different. And if we really are different, we should press towards the part of letting God do something new in us to where we actually are what he says we are. He says we are the healed. Then <laughs> why are we still living like we're sick? <laughs> he says we are the prospered the blessed, then why are we still living like we don't have it? It's a year of new beginnings. God wants to do a new thing. God wants to do a new work. Yes. Amen. Oh, I had so much here. <laughs> Glory to God, but we're going for a few weeks, so that's all right. Thank you, Jesus. I looked up the words new beginning, and just to get a simple breakdown of it, the word beginning means first in time, the start of something. First in time or the start of something. See, taking that back to what I said about God wanting to do something new and the word becoming more than just quoted scriptures, if you've really not walked in what the word says you are, then it needs to start. Amen. Meaning we need to get out of the starting block. It's one thing, I think, I, I, I'll, learn, I'll say this for myself. I've realized, and this is, God's been working on me in this, and now 2021, he's just saying, preach this to the church. But it's like there's a lot of things that I've quoted and that I've confessed. And, and your quoting and your confession is like getting in the starting block. But if you don't ever leave the starting block, I mean, the Bible says we're in a race, right? Well, if you're in a race, you have to leave the starting block. <laughs> and God is saying, I believe with a year of new beginnings, he's firing the shot for us to leave the starting block. But even when he fires the shot, it's up to you whether or not you leave the starting block. Or are you going to just... And he goes, start! And he pulls the trigger and the gun goes off. And we sit there and go, yeah, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away, all things become new. <laughs> I am the righteousness of God in Christ. <laughs> I've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. I've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm more than a conqueror, glory to God. And there we sit in the block. It's like, well, no, you haven't even gotten in the race. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
get in the race. Yes. You say, well, I don't know if I take off, if I've got enough stamina. Don't worry about it. Well, I don't even know if I can win. Don't worry about it. Get in the race. The tortoise wasn't concerned whether or not he was going to win. He just got in the race. Come on. And even though the silly rabbit was doing all kinds of crazy things, he'd go zooming by him at several different times throughout the story. He'd go flying by. He never even put his eye on the rabbit. He just... <laughs> the rabbit would zoom by, get in front of him, go, eh, and, and the tortoise would just... Come on. But the word beginning, as I said, means first time, the start of something. The word new just simply means fresh. So that means the Lord is saying, this is the year to have a fresh start. A fresh start. To have a fresh start, you've got to let go of some of the old things. Even if they were good, you've got to let go and get something fresh. The Lord gave the children of Israel in the wilderness fresh manna every day. Fresh. He didn't give them a whole bunch and then just let them store it up because it would have gotten stale. And it also would have taken their eyes off of him to trust him every day. See, a fresh start, a new beginning means you're trusting God every day. Amen. This is a time during New Year's Eve where people make New Year's resolutions. Why do they make New Year's resolutions? Because they know the start of a new year is something fresh, something new. They want something different. That's why people may, and I, I'm not, this message is not for us as the body of Christ to make a New Year's resolution. Because a New Year's resolution is something you try to do in your own strength. And we all know what happened with New Year's resolutions, if you've ever done one. It lasts maybe a week. Some might only last a couple of days. Like, I'm not eating any more cheesecake. <laughs> I had to say that because right when I was about to say <laughs> giving something up and I looked at Chad and I thought, that brother loves cheesecake. <laughs> but see, I know Chad well enough that he's not going to be foolish enough to say I'm never going to eat cheesecake again. So he doesn't have to worry about giving it up. <laughs> but that's why people, even the, even the world knows that the start of a new year, there's something about it that causes them to go, well, I'm going to do something different. The only problem is they do it in their own strength and it falls by the wayside. Well, you know, we can do the same thing with God. That's why I want to take it more to a, a spiritual level. I'm not talking about natural things. I'm not even talking about setting your, well, it's a year of new beginnings, so I want a new car. Forget about the car. Focus on the spiritual. Well, it's a year of new beginnings, so I'm going to... Forget about it. Focus on the spiritual. Because see, when we focus on the spiritual, being the new things that we want to grow in, the natural comes in line. That's right. It's just kind of an automatic. Amen. A year of new beginnings. I challenge you this morning. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to share some more. I'm sure the Pastor Dean has already got something probably rolling around on the inside of her. I know her well enough to know. I'm, she'll, she'll be probably telling me after the service today. You know, I got something that I can share. I got a message. <laughs> and that's good because I like to hear her, her input and her perspective on the things that the Lord is speaking to me. But I would challenge you today Locate yourself. You don't have to go announcing it to anybody else. If you do, sometimes it's good to say, wow, you know what the Lord showed me? Because you put yourself out there. See, I do that sometimes because I like to put myself out there. It kind of brings accountability. I'll go to her many times and say, man, do you know what the Lord just showed me? And before I tell her, that I'll be on the inside, I'm telling myself, I don't want to let her know that. 
There's times where I share stuff about myself to you guys that, that a lot of pastors wouldn't do because they want to keep themselves the picture of, you know, I got it going on. I don't always have it going on because I deal with life just like you deal with life. And just because I pastor doesn't mean I have a special anointing to deal with life. There's an anointing the pastor and then there's an anointing to live life. The anointing to live life is the same anointing that you've got to live life. So I don't have a problem telling off on myself because I don't want one person that ever comes to this church to put Pastor Steve on a pedestal because if I ever fall off the pedestal, it's not going to hurt me any other than the fact is I'm going to have to figure out how to navigate through that in my life. But it's going to hurt you because you're going to think, oh my gosh, I thought Pastor Steve got everything right. I thought he had such an in with God that he just never messed up in this area. No, that ain't true. So I want to challenge you this morning as we go forward over the next several weeks talking about new beginnings. Tell yourself where you'd like to see a new beginning, spiritually speaking. And then be willing enough to locate yourself and be honest. Don't, don't, see, it's, it's real easy to walk into church and put the, the, your, best, your best Christian face on and make it sound like everything's going okay. But I know that it's not true because not everything is always going okay in my life. I've learned how to easily, more easily navigate through it, not let the drama of life and the, and the different things, you know, cause me to fall apart. But if I know it's happening in my life, it's happening in your life. And me just, me just like you, walking up and someone saying, well, how are you doing? Well, I'm blessed and highly favored of God. Well, that's good. I know the word says that, but really, how are you doing? And to have a new beginning, you've got to stop lying to yourself. <laughs> Keep it real. Come on. And you've got to stop lying to other people. Come on. I'm just blessed and highly favored. Yeah, well, okay. Now, I'm not saying you walk around with a negative confession. See, we've, we've taken the whole confession thing and thrown it in a ditch on both sides. It's like, well, I can't have a negative confession. Speaking about what's going on is not a negative confession. That's just declaring, you know what? This is what's going on, but this is what I'm going for. This is what I know God said I can have, so now I'm going to figure out how to have it. Amen. So locate yourself. And when I say locate yourself, like I said before, if you have some prayers answered, praise God for that. But how many would like to have more prayers answered? Yeah. You know? I heard one preacher say recently, I was listening to, and he said, isn't it something how you can be, I mean, even in our, in our midst right now, we got about 40 or 50 people here, and it's just like, if I was say, you know, who's got a testimony, and you have one or two people say, well, this, God did this. You know, and God did that, we'd all be like, hey, praise the Lord, which it is something praiseworthy to hear it. But the other 48 haven't had nothing. That's not very good odds. So take that into our own personal life. Well, yeah, over the last year, I've had, you know, 10 testimonies of God answering my prayer. I was believing God, and he came. Well, how many times did you pray? Well, I probably prayed about 200 or 300 times about different things. But I got 10 of them answered. Well, I don't want to take that away from you. I'm not saying that to take that away from you, but think about it. In the natural world, if you were only getting, you know, about a 5% return, and you could get reinvest in something different and get a, 50% return, wouldn't it be wise to go to the 50% return? And then while you're getting the 50% return, you do a little investigating, you find out, oh my gosh, I can get a 75% return if I do it this way. That's what I'm talking about locating yourself. It's like not saying, oh my gosh, I'm a failure. It's saying, wow, I'm not walking in near everything that I confess. I'm not walking in near everything that God says I can do. I'm not even close to it. It's just like, thank God for the things that I am walking in. But Lord, to this year is a year of new beginning, which means I'm going to advance from where I've been and start moving forward to more of what you've got. Yeah. Amen. That's what I'm saying about locating yourself. It's not to beat yourself up. But it's to say, you know what? How many would agree that there's a whole lot more of God that could be working in your life than what's presently working? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's probably the easiest way of locating yourself. 
how much of God is working in your life, then I want this much more. I'm going to have that much more. A year of new beginnings, amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning that you are making a new way. <laughs> Woo! Ways, <laughs> as it said in Isaiah, ways through the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Don't be afraid of how he's making the way and what he's making it through. Just know that it's a new way. It's a new beginning. It's a fresh start. So, Father, we thank you <laughs> for a year of new beginnings. Fresh starts. Fresh manna. Not living on the old or dwelling on the past or living in the past, but pressing forward for something new. You even said in your word that you're making a new heaven and a new earth. Huh. And Father, thank you. Thank you. Help us to see things, Lord. Each one of us. Help us to see things. Help us to get out of the starting block if we're stuck. Give us the boldness and the confidence to leave the starting block. Because <laughs> sometimes the starting block is the comfortable place. To have a new beginning means you've got to have a new start. You've got to go somewhere you've not gone before. And sometimes the unknown is very uncomfortable. <laughs> we like comfort. We like safe. We like the familiar. To have a new beginning, you need to move beyond the comfort, the safe place, the familiar. How many are willing to go out beyond the familiar and the comfort? That's where you'll see new things. If you're willing to go out beyond that, Hallelujah. And that just comes because you trust him. See, to have a new beginning is to develop your relationship deeper than what you've had. To know him better than you even know him now. And I know everybody in here knows him to a degree. I know him to a degree. But to go to something new... You've got to be able to have confidence in him and trust him because when you do, that's when you're willing to step out in something new. But when you don't know him to another level, that's when you're hesitant. You'll sit back and it's like, well, this is, this is where I'm comfortable. And there's some in the body of Christ, and I don't believe there's one in here like that, but there are some in the body of Christ that will never move out beyond where they're at because they li it's like, I like this. I mean, we, we know somebody that, uh, as a matter of fact, if you actually look up, and heard, I've heard this before, is that there's like 70% or 75% of people will never move more than 20 miles away from where they were born and raised. And it's because they're comfortable. It's just like, you know, this is what I know. It's comfortable here. They're satisfied with the results that they're getting or satisfied with the life they've got. Now, I'm not saying you throw your whole life upside down. I'm not saying that at all. But that just shows where the mindset of we as humans, if we're living from our humanity, will be. But as we begin to step out and live out of our spiritual being, our spiritual selves, that's when it's easier to have that new beginning and go to that new place. So that would really, well, I would say, to start of the new beginning and say, Lord, I'm going to decrease my humanity and increase my spirituality. Yeah. That was the, those are just the words he just gave me now. Meaning I'm going to live less out of my own understanding and my humanity and live more out of my spiritual understanding and who you've created me to be. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. By your spirit.
Praise the Lord. Well, we'll pick up next week. Amen. How many are excited for new beginnings? Yeah. Amen. Amen.